while Stevens supporters, who were giving interviews last week, have shut down interviews with reporters this week, Marin supporters are talking. One of those in that meeting was Western Ohio pastor and Republican Representative Gary Click. He says Stevens lied to him in saying he would not challenge Marin, and he says some of Stevens' supporters lied to him as well. Here's part of our conversation just after that meeting. The spirit in the room, first of all, we all just commended Derek and the whole leadership team that we chose in caucus. They're all all stars as far as I'm concerned. They're wonderful people and they deserve our respect and our loyalty. Uh, people have been wondering, is there going to be a coup against the coup? And there's not. Uh, I, I've said oftentimes, you know, you have to work with what you have instead of what you wish you had or, or what you think you deserve or even what you ought to have. So this is, this is what we have. So we're not we're not trying to be obstructionist. In fact, what we want to make sure is that the super minority party, the 22, that they're not obstructionists. We, we promised our constituents conservative legislation. We all promised that on the campaign trail. That's how we got a super majority. And, you know, they, they had to kind of sell their soul, in a sense, to the Democrat Party. And they're beholden to Alison Rousseau. If she doesn't like something, she's got control. Uh, over the speaker right now and we just want to make sure that we don't get sold down the stream we want to advance you know what was formerly known as hjr6 you saw that we this took is the 60 percent uh, voter approval for constitutional correct, amendments correct uh, we want to get that across we have time to do that the question is you know he says he didn't sell us out on that he tells me he's not going to support it but then the rumor is they're out whipping people for that i don't know what to expect so I think it'd be a good faith effort to, to bring unity back to the caucus if they would stop canceling session, let's have session, and let's go in and let's have committee, let's, let's vote this thing out, let's get it done. That would be a great show of unity because it seems disingenuous that they divide the caucus and then call for unity. That's disingenuous. I want to see a real call for unity, and if you're going to really call for unity, you're going to show respect to the 45 uh, not that we're going to run everything. We, we should just do things as a team. Well, but having a separate meeting like that uh, without the speaker there, does that bring unity? I mean, you're all Republicans. Are you all working together or are there two different factions? So, so I think w what we had to do is, is get some direction. And what is the direction moving forward? I, I was looking for that, to be honest, because you've watched. I've been very harsh, you know, and and so What's the attitude of the leadership? We want, first of all, I want to give uh, Derek, again, time to grieve, time to heal from his own personal loss. But then, okay, what, what do we, let, let's not just everyone go down his own way, and what do we do? And, you know, uh, Representative Marin was the first one to say, he says, if Jason Steven puts out something that's good and that's solid, he's, I'm going to be the first one to support it. So he set that tone. We kind of had to have a little family conference in that to say, okay, what do we do? Because there's, a, there's temptation to be, an obstructionist, there's temptation to, to go along to get along, and there's temptation just to, let's just fight for what we believe in. And I think we needed that family conference to say, okay, let's come together, let's work with them where we can, uh, but let's also make sure that the majority of our the values of our caucus don't get left in the dust. So this wasn't a third caucus being formed, uh, or was it? I don't know. We'll have to see how that goes. I mean, you know, Technically, uh, Derek is the leader of our caucus. He was elected as the leader of our caucus, you know, back when we had that caucus vote. But he says he recognizes Stevens as the speaker. He does. Yeah, and quite Do honestly, you? well, that's a good question because quite honestly, I've not called him Speaker Stevens before um, because I feel like it was illegitimately done. But, you know, Derek set the pace today. He called him Speaker Stevens, so I'll call him Speaker Stevens. Is part of this also some concern about who controls the Ohio House Republican Alliance campaign account, which has about $3.3 million in it. Mm -hmm. Where does that money go and who has control of it? Is that part of the whole well, I debate think that, as well? I think that, yeah, that is, a part of, that is a part of the question because, you know, that money belongs to the caucus and the caucus should control that. And the caucus is, the majority of the caucus is with Representative Marin. And so there's 45 solid there. There's 22 on the other side. And uh, I think, honestly, I think it would be very conciliatory of uh, Speaker Stevens to reach out to Derek and uh, Representative Marin and say, okay, let's, let's do this together uh, as a team uh, and work that out and, and give Derek some authority in that, or yield some of that. I mean, quite, quite honestly, we're the majority of the caucus, we're in control.
and we, we get to say on those things. So I know those things are going to have to be ironed out, but, you know, Re Speaker Stevens can fight against us or he can send an olive branch and say, I, I want to work with the 45. I know I've only got 22 and you're 45, but I got the speaker's gavel, but let's work together. Both Representative Merritt and Representative St or Speaker Stevens are both Representative Merritt and Speaker Stevens are conservative. It's, con it's confusing. Yeah. Yeah. They are conservative, though. Both of uh, these gentlemen are conservative. So what are you worried about that's not going to get moved forward? So conservatives don't make deals with Democrats. So I No bipartisanship? That's a whole different story, because you know I've ran bipartisan bills. But you don't sell out your colleagues to the Democrats. I have bipartisan bills. I, 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 I work with... There's some great Democrats on the other side uh, that I love. I consider them my friends, but I don't give them the keys to the House. And they gave them the keys to the House. They sold out some legislation is what I believe. And I would be happy to be proven wrong. I would be, prove me wrong and, and I'll, I'll be the happiest man in the world. But based on my conversations, they made deals on HDR 6. Uh, you know, they killed that in lame duck. That was a down payment for the Democrats. It was like the dowry on the wedding, you know? And so I'm concerned that they sold us out. He's already told me he's gonna be softer on redistricting. And I mean, he told me that face to face in our hour long meeting that was very civil, very cordial, but also very direct. You know, I, I, I tend to say what I'm thinking. I try to be nice and, you know, once in a, you know, I honestly, I think I, I went, stepped over the line at one point with someone and I apologize to them. Uh, for doing that, and I removed my post because I, they, you know, as a pastor, I'm holding to a higher standard than most people, and I should be. And I had friends remind me of that, so I, I tried to take action and apologize. So a lot of this remains to be seen, I guess. I think it does, and I think a lot of it remains to be seen. How is Speaker Stevens uh, and our Speaker Pro Tem? Uh, how are, how are they going to respond to us? I just had a, a caught in Speaker Pro Tem. Yeah. On the way up the stairs to come here, we Scott have, Oslager. Yeah, Scott Oslager. I'm sorry, I uh, should have said that. Uh, but I caught him on the way up here. We had a very nice discussion. You know, I, I and I told him I, I've always respected him. I don't respect what he did. I voted against him. Uh, in other circumstances, I would not have. But that day, I was a no on everything. I, mean, I, I was I, I was just this is my protest. I'm a no on everything. Matter of fact, they, I didn't even know all that we had to vote on. They said the Pledge of Allegiance. I hit red. It's like, no, I can't vote no on that. So I hit the green button. Uh, some of the staff said, what, you don't want to pay us? I said, don't worry. I'm the only no vote. You'll get paid. Uh, but it was just, it was me expressing my great dissatisfaction, what I believe was a betrayal.